but we'll talk about it and break it down right now. This is Teal Town After Dark. Good evening, everyone. It is October 22nd, 2021. The San Jose Sharks beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 5-3. to We're here to break it down for you. So welcome to this edition of Teal Town After Dark. This is your live interactive Sharks post game. We do this after every single game. So if you aren't already, why not? Why not? Be a subscriber and hit that subscribe button. But of course, Deal together and interact with us and fellow Sharks fans on the page or the app as you're watching us. Follow us on the social, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Reddit, Discord, and find everything at tealtownusa.com. I am Eric Kura alongside Mr. Ian Reed. Buddy, how are you? Good. How are you? I am ecstatic. I mean, this was one of the ones that we talked about being kind of the early season test and Mm -hmm. and sure enough uh it is i I mean this was a big test for the whole club and um you know on a second set of back-to-backs i mean there were a lot of parameters that could set up set this up as okay we're good Uh, it it was a good run you know but uh the Leafs can knock us down but they were resilient yeah, I mean, there was there was a lot to like about this game, right? I mean, there was definitely some things that I, I think were concerning, but overall, um, you know, obviously they won, and that's always good when the Sharks do good. It's good, but there was there was a lot to like about this game, absolutely. And it didn't start off like super smooth. I mean, first period you didn't have a whole lot, uh, you know, even shots at eleven eleven. You had Couture taking a bad tripping call, I thought, and then Richie doing Richie things, as I think I saw a number, number of uh, times with saying interference on Ferraro, which was a dumb penalty. But first period, I mean, did they look like, I mean, it's a weird six o'clock start, even a East Coast time if they're still. Yeah, I don't. Custom- I, I don't understand the the start. Like, did they ever say why? This was a, like I I never got the reason why like a six o'clock on a Friday such a weird start time for a hockey game. The only thing I heard I think it was from TSN 1050 in Toronto that Mark Master said that it would be the first uh first time the Leafs go over the border and they wanted some extra time to do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let's let's enough. let's disregard the ratings in the Bay Area for it. Uh, but I would also think for the Sharks, it's all, also a big thing, too, because of, um, you know, they have to get back over the border and get to Boston for a game while they don't play the next night, but they play early, well, West Coast time tomorrow uh, on Sunday morning, uh, mm. you know. So I could I could kind of see where they're coming back with that. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it just like I said, it was a weird, just a really weird start time for a game, and and that and that hurts the Sharks too, right? Anytime like you play a back to back and you get kind of shortchanged like that. Now it was only an hour, so it's not like the end of the world. And I don't want to, you know, it's not like they they played a night game and then they played the next day in the afternoon, right? Like that's that would be like the all time worst changeover <laughs> for, on on a back to back. But you know, that you you'll still lose an hour, so. Um, I was expecting the Sharks to probably be a little more affected by that than they were. Yeah. And, and I thought for a second set of back-to-backs, you had to fly into Toronto the night before. And sure. now, now all that, you know, like I said, I thought it was a setup for them to just not be able to do much tonight. And yeah, they looked a little sluggish early on, but yeah. Second period. Yeah, definitely some concerns over on. I mean, the, the first period, if we want to stop there for ahead, a second. Like the first period, I thought like that made me really made me really worried. Right. Because like the shots were even at the end of the period, but the play certainly wasn't like the the Sharks had a lot of trouble tonight, especially I think their bottom two lines had a lot of trouble tonight with Toronto's cycle. Um, there was and then in the first period, it was kind of like everyone was having trouble with Toronto cycle. Like they just could not get the puck 
out of their own zone. And even though the shots were even, uh, the Sharks blocked a lot of shots. And there's a lot of shots that didn't make it through uh, to Aiden Hill. And the shots that did make it through to Aiden Hill, he was really, really, you know, he was really, uh, he. I thought he played pretty, uh, he played a really solid game tonight. Um, so I, I look at it, you know, I look at the game um, after the first period, you had, you know, if you're a Sharks fan, you had to be pretty, you know, pretty concerned because obviously if that was the first period and you know that fatigue is going to set in the longer that the period, you know, longer the game goes, right. Um, this game could have been, this game could have been a disaster uh, for the Sharks. You know, they could have got worked the whole time and, and they, you know, to their credit, you know, they came out in the second period and, you know, they made some adjustments and, uh, you know, and, and we'll get to it. But great, you know, great game. Yeah, a uh, really solid game All right now. Uh, let's get to this. We got this super chat beforehand, so we appreciate mm-hmm. it. Mitya Reznikov, uh, got a drive now, so here's some money before the show starts. Question. <laughs> appreciate it. Are we good? I think so. I think so. I, I Look. You know, when when the Sharks made all their moves this year, th- this offseason, I remember when we came in before all the Evander Kane stuff happened. And I remember going on Teal Tinted Glasses um, and, and saying, you know, like this summer kind of reminded me. And now, again, I don't want to think that people we're not getting ahead of ourselves. But this What's summer that? reminded me a lot of the summer of 2015, 20, like going into the 2016 season yeah. where the Sharks made a lot of moves that I liked. And, you know. It wasn't like, again, I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves here. It's only four games. It's a long season. And, you know, there's going to be some pain ahead because there's always pain in any season, regardless of whether you're Tampa Bay or or Buffalo, (laughs) Buffalo more than others. Right. (laughs) That's true. So. But, I, you know, when we came to the season, I said, you know, I, I can see a path for the Sharks to do well if a lot goes right. And so far, a lot has gone right. You look at. Um, you know, you look at a lot of the summer moves. I think a lot of them have paid off, you know, getting Aiden Hill. Uh, I was concerned about Aiden Hill and Ryan because when we first signed them, I'm like, well, do we have two one B goalies? But so far they've been up to the task. Um, you know, Jonathan Dolan coming over. I didn't know what to make of that because it's one thing to tear it up in the second tier Swedish league. It's another thing to do it in the NHL. And right. so far he's doing it in the NHL. Um, Eric Carlson has been, you know, has come into the season with a chip on his shoulder. I think, you know, guys are proud. And I think that, you know, he's a guy who obviously and and justifiably so in in, in some cases took a lot of flack last year. Mm-hmm. And he's come in with a chip on his shoulder and he's been the best that I've seen him in Teal. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, are they good? Like this team, there's a lot of talent on this team. Like we've always said that, you know, like, mm-hmm. yes, there's. There's some guys that were really, you know, who are still concerning. Like, I think Vlasic had a good game tonight, at least like, you know, he set up that goal on, on the offense and I thought that was great, but there's still parts of his game that concern me. Um, but, you know, overall, like, again, and a lot of things have gone right. And and I think they're going to have to continue going right. But it's amazing what happens when you get league average goaltending or better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, just another Randy G with a donation as well. Appreciate it. Just got to say hi to Daddy Ian before <laughs> driving to Seattle. Watch Seattle and Vancouver tomorrow. Sharks win 4-0. Uh, Randy, safe travels. Hope you have fun yeah, buddy. at the Kraken uh, home opener. Uh, yeah, definitely. But, 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 oh, I, enjoy that. That's going to be awesome. I, I But Ian, I didn't know you had older children. <laughs> I have all the children. <laughs> oh, but but I mean we we saw some of these these streaks even before with you know without uh the goaltending. We saw mm-hmm. some of these streaks last year and it kind of made us hmm, maybe maybe and then they would they faltered uh later on where they had like three wins in their last like 15 18 games. So yeah, th- yeah. this team has but potential. But a lot of those streaks last year came against the other California teams, which weren't very good. Like, and and not to say like, and not to say Ottawa is a world beater, but I think they're a better team this year. Like I, I I liked a lot of what I saw. Like, I think that's a team that's definitely going to be on the rise. Um, Montreal's uh, in shambles right now, but 
Um, you know, they beat a good, what I think is a good team in Winnipeg, maybe not off to the greatest start. And they beat a good team tonight in Toronto, who again is, I don't think is off to a great start, but I don't think, you know, I just achieved what's on the chat said somebody <laughs> threw their, their, their sweater on the ice. And I don't think they're there yet. Like I don't, no. it's a bad start, but I don't, you know, if I'm, if I'm a Leafs fan, like, I don't think I'm super concerned. I mean, I guess I'm super concerned because Leafs fans are always super concerned, but like as in from an outsider looking in, like I don't look at that team and I, I'm not worried if I'm the Toronto Maple Leafs. I think they're going to be fine. I think going into the season, I think goaltending was a question mark. Jack Campbell, I think is a decent guy, but Michael Hutchinson is, I don't know how he still has an NHL job. I think that's what happens when you probably spend your cap money um, the way that Toronto has. And you, you know, you have to, you have to kind of fill in some of the gaps on the cheap. And I think Michael, Michael Hutchinson is exactly that. Yeah. Um, but because I mean, Morassic is injured, right? Isn't that, isn't that why that uh, Hutchinson's up? Because uh, they said Jack Campbell's starting right. tomorrow. Yeah, you could be right. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I again, I don't think, I, I don't think like if I'm the Toronto Maple Leafs, I'm, am I upset that they lost tonight? Sure. Cause I think again, there is, there was stretches of this game where they, you know, just absolutely took the sharks to the woodshed, especially absolutely. the bottom two lines. Um, and I, I, I can't overstate that enough, but the thing, you know, bringing this back to the sharks, the, the, the great thing about what happened tonight is that the sharks, you know, they didn't roll over and they didn't, they got the goaltending meeting and I can't stress enough how important, getting good goaltending is because this game last year probably was over in the first. Oh, big time. I mean, right. We probably would have seen four goals on 11 shots, you know, uh, it, and yeah, Kevin's saying, yes, Morazic pulled his groin. The first period of game one is out for weeks. Yeah. So there you go. So, yeah. I mean, you're playing your third string goalie but, in Michael Hutchinson and, that, and that's, that's, you know, that is what it is. And, and the other thing too, is, that, you know, you're talking about, you know, the goaltending, uh, mm-hmm. You know, last year, I mean, Chris saying still early, but a bad start or mediocre showing up front has not been a guaranteed loss from the goaltending side. Um, you know, you, you get that good start that gives you the confidence and then you keep get, then you build that momentum to get going. And then sure mm-hmm. enough, you know, two and a half minutes in Logan gets them on the board. You know, I, I love the play by Vlasic. It was a nice. Yeah, well, great play pinch. by Vlasic. Um, but. Couture, you know, at first we saw that it was the hurdle line getting going with things, but now Couture's line getting going with with Timo and Jonathan Dolan. Yeah, I mean, Timo Meyer is a guy who I really caution people in the summer. A lot of, you know, a lot of people were really down on Timo this summer, and I wasn't, and this is why, because I still think, I think he he has, he's he's a talented player. He's a, he has a good shot when he wants to use it and doesn't just shoot at everything. And I think, again, when you go back to what happened with Timo Meyer last year was Logan Couture, like, is is the guy that's going to drive the play on that line. Right. And when Logan Couture was a shell of himself going into the second half of last season, uh, Timo Meyer was definitely affected by it. And I think what healthy, a healthy Couture is going to mean, you know, a good Timo Meyer. And now... They also have Dolan on that line, who I think is incredibly dangerous. He's going to draw defensemen. And, you know, there's that the best part of that line is who do you cover as, as a defenseman? Right. Who do you cover on that line? You can't you can't leave any of those guys open, which means, you know, one of them is going to get open and they're all all three are dangerous. And as as long as Dolan can keep playing the way he is, the first this first line, you know, I, I don't know if I I don't know if it's you know I don't I don't get hyperbolic but I mean this might end up being one of the best first lines in the league when it's all said and done. Now, granted things could go the other way too, but <laughs> I, I I look at this line and I think you know there's as far as like first lines that the Sharks this is one of the best first lines the Sharks had in a few years at least. Yeah. No, I, I mean absolutely they they've been on a a strong run and tonight really showed it. I mean. They all got in on the scoring. I know I didn't get all the uh, stats up for them, but, uh, you know, Dolan with one goal, Couture with the three-point night, Timo Meyer had a goal and assist. I mean, it's, to steal a hockey trick phrase, you love to see it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, but it just seems to be rolling, and here's the thing. You need 
you have options now. There's no, I don't want to say dead weight on, on the line, but you have options and you're right. Where is he going to go? Yeah. And uh, Den Denver Doyle in the chat, uh, you know, do I think Weatherby is the most underrated addition so far? Honestly, the guy who's really impressed me a lot and surprised the hell of me, Weatherby is definitely one of them, but I would actually give that to Jacob Middleton. Jacob Middleton yeah. is a guy I had zero expectation for coming in. I thought, you know, he's probably going to get a couple of games and he's going to get sent back to the Barracuda. And I think he has been just, he's been great. Um, you know, he had a couple, he had a couple rough goes tonight, which I think you're going to when you have the talent Toronto has on the ice. But uh, early on so far, I've been really impressed with Jacob Middleton's play. Um, who's a guy who I was high on for, for a while at the Barracuda, but then he, uh, you know, obviously is a guy who's been passed in the, on the depth chart for the Sharks um, quite a few times now. You know, you thought that he would make this jump. He should have made this jump sooner based on the trajectory he was on early on as the uh, Barracuda. But uh, Jacob Middleton, I think, is is that guy for me. He's the guy that's really been the underrated, um, probably a guy who's not getting enough talk as far as how good he's been. I, I I completely agree with you. I mean, yes, Weatherby. I love having Weatherby. Yeah, been Weatherby in the I front mean, of the net for the power play. Yeah, and Weatherby was a guy who, when you know the rookie tournament happened, I was like, okay, yeah, he looked really good. But he's 23, playing against teenagers, like he should look really good. So I'll see what he looks like in camp, and then he gets to camp, and he's continued, and he's continued so far. He's been really good on the. You know, he's been really good on the team so far four games in. I mean, you look at, you know, uh, Dylan Gambrell, who? Yeah, no, completely agree. And, and I think a lot more versatile. I mean, I don't remember seeing Gambrell on the power play at all. Uh, no. and, and sticking his big butt in there, I, like I mentioned, that Tom, Tomas Holmstrom, um, mm -hmm. you know, butt in the way. Even if he's not getting anything deflected in, like we've seen, like maybe in the past with Pavs, just to be that big yeah. body. Uh, yeah, it, no big body, and it, like, and I'm not expecting like, I'm not expecting Weatherby to be this big goal scorer, right? Like he's right. not, he's not there to score all the goals. I think he has a little more offensive upside than Gambrell did, but, um, but you know, like I'm not expecting him to to score a lot of goals, but he does, he does control play well when he has the puck, and I, and again, like you said, you know, he's a he's a big body, he knows how to get in front of the net, and kind of cause havoc in front of the net, especially on the power play. So, but, but getting back to Middleton, you know, I was totally mm -hmm. going to say Middleton as well on here because Middleton had, I mean, we didn't expect a whole lot. And like you said, we were waiting for Hataka. I was to expecting him to get, yeah. Hata I thought Hataka was, he was going to get a couple of games. He wasn't going to cut it. Hataka was going to steal his spot and Jacob Middleton was going to go back to the Barracuda never to be seen again. Right. And, and, you know, you're also waiting for Kinezhov to go back from from his injury and everything. Mm -hmm. And he looks I and mean, he's worked really well. And I saw him break up a two on one while Carlson was pinching. I, I just really liked his play. And having 17 and a half minutes tonight, it shows that Bugner and the coaching staff have confidence in him. And so, again, it's down the road when people are going to get healthy. It's going to be very interesting to see how you change this lineup for some reason, unless somebody else has to be taken out for some reason. It's just definitely, I mean, it's really good. So one, nothing Couture on that at 231. And then, uh, you know, not even a minute later, Spezza gets one back for, for Toronto to tie it up. And then 17 seconds later, Timo Meyer puts in a nice shot that, you know, I don't. I don't think Hutchinson even expected to make it no. two one, <laughs> and then the the one. I think if anything, the one little hiccup was the breakaway with Kasha. Uh, he scored, and then he tried to take out Wes McCauley. Rude. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really like. I know. I I, I kind of figured out like you kind of want to save there, and I understand like it's a breakaway, so I understand like you know it's a one on one battle, and it's you know I didn't think I didn't think much of like I didn't think it was much of a move. But um, and I know I think sometimes people get defensive just because of how hard I was on Jones last year. But like, I, you know, you, like I said, you probably want to save there. I didn't think it was much of a move by Kasha, but it's, I, I understand that it's a one on one battle. But, you know, at the same time, like, you know, like it's for sure, like he had to, you know, there was no there was no help there. Um, but I, did, I didn't think much of the move. But other than that, like, I thought that was really the only hiccup in in, uh, in Hill's game tonight. 
Yeah, big time. Uh, Tyler, just subscribed, the longtime listener. Appreciate it. Thank you for very much. Yeah. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to let you know when we go on live. Um, so Absolutely. So that, that made it 2-2. And then EK65, uh, you know, off of a turnover from San Ramon native Austin Matthews, Middleton, you know, <laughs> like, Chris Chelios feeding Doug Wilson back in the day. <laughs> no doubt. Gives it to Carlson. Carlson with a booming shot that I think picks top corner. Eric Carlson, I mean, is on a roll here. Two goals, four assists to to get things going. I mean, what do you think changed besides the hair now that he's more aerodynamic, I guess? I I think, <laughs> like I said, I think it's it's, I think health probably, you know, Health, health is obviously going to be a factor, and I think he's probably he he looks like he's one hundred percent. And I think again, pride, man. Like I think, I think that some guys, you know, like they they know when the heat's on. Like this guy is the highest paid defenseman in the league, right? Yep. Like, and and people are. You know, uh, and people all over the place, whether it's, you know, in San Jose or around the league, have talked a lot of shit about Eric Carlson in the past two years. And like I said, With a reason. lot of it justifiably so. Absolutely. But, you know, obviously, I think, again, you know, you have a guy like that, incredibly skilled, incredibly proud, you know, so he has an option. He can sit around and collect his check or he can go out and do something about it. And so far, he's gone out and done something about it. He said at the start of the season. I still think I'm one of the best players in the league and I'm going to show, show it. Yeah. And so far he has. Yeah. And we're, we're, we've definitely been getting some of these in the chat as well. Jessica, thank you. Long time listener or, and viewer, I guess uh, four games in and good luck trying to break into this lineup. EK nine. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. That's another. Ugh. Yeah. I mean, uh, so that made it three, two after two periods. Then unfortunately on our end, I know you got the TSN mm -hmm. feed up there. Uh, the Sharks lost their feed and and they didn't get to the dongle right away. Twenty five seconds in, but again, I think for for Dolan, he's finding the right spots to be at. Yeah, and he's yeah, cashing he's in really shifty. Um, knows where to go, knows what, like and loves to shoot the puck. Right, and right. I think that's something that more Sharks forwards need is the just the love of shooting the puck because there's you know sometimes they get a little too pass happy and we've criticized that a hundred <laughs> times, but you know, Jonathan Dolan loves to shoot the puck and so far it's, it's paid off for him. And um, I, I was watching the shark suit, so I missed the, the, the goal as oh. well, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, unfortunate, but again, like that first line, I mean, again, you know, that first line, that was the one line that really didn't you know that was that the line that got hemmed in their zone the least um that line has been you know is something and i'm looking forward to seeing more of that line going forward especially as you know as the season rolls on and guys get more used to each other yeah completely agree and, and you gotta you gotta love the the chemistry building on you know um mm -hmm. so you have that uh then then you got some tr you know you got peterson taking a tripping call you had a whole taking a cross check, which to me kind of was a makeup for the one that they missed earlier in the game. Yeah, I thought so too. Um, to which, you know, the Sharks didn't score. So, um, Ian, I, I ask you of this, uh, what's wrong with the Sharks' power play tonight? I mean, what happened to them? They were, they were 5 for 12 and they went 0 for 2 uh, tonight. I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's funny, right? Because, like, the power play is usually something that we just beat the crap out of. But the power play's been fine. And I think... It feels less structured than last year. Like it feels like there's a little more free flowing. And I think sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't tonight, maybe not so much, but I think that when there's there, there feels like this season, there's less set plays on the power play I, that they're looking for. Or, or again, there are options, you know, LeBanc usually was on that left side for the Ovechkin Stamco shot tonight. He was on the right side. Um, yeah. But I also like how they were moving things around. Yes, it was more perimeter passing, but they were definitely looking to get the Leafs PKers, you know, off target. And I know Carlson tried to get a shot, you know, in the middle of the point or middle yeah. of the blue line. Uh, Burns did the same thing. I, I see what they were trying to do there. So 
you try things, then you go back. Yeah, to it's a little more free flowing <laughs> than it than it's been previously, and I think that's that's been a positive so far. I, I you know, um, uh, John John McLean John McLean came in this year, right? Yeah. He's the power play coach now. Yeah. You know, and a lot of there's a lot of concern there, man, because he was also the power play coach in Arizona, and that despite the weapons that Arizona has, their power play was atrocious. So I was really concerned when he came in, but so far. Um, you know, full marks. Yeah, big time. We're we're getting some comments from the locker room now. Uh, Bugner, huge two points, keeps us rolling. But more anything, I like the complete team effort. Uh, our boys were huge for us tonight, and there are a, a lot of little things and a lot of sacrifices. I mean, you you gotta love it. I mean, I I know I gift one on our on our Twitter from the Montreal game of just guys hanging in there, even if they're dead tired, blocking shots and and some sorts doing whatever it takes. Oh, there, yeah. I mean, there was a couple of times where um, Brent Burns and Mario Ferraro were just out there for way too long because they couldn't get it out and they were dogmatic on the puck. Like they just, the, the, the effort, even though they had to be absolutely gassed, like they, pardon me sorry like that it was it was really really like it was really the the effort they put in and like again top like there's a lot of guys that would get top marks from me tonight and mario ferraro and brent burns uh definitely did some work in in the defensive end uh getting stuck out there because you know sometimes they you know they couldn't get off and i thought that when they were out there at least it was you know they they kept the pressure on to to stop Toronto from really getting those great A opportunities, even though they had their cycle going. Yeah. And they, they made a run. I mean, Tavares made it four, three and I'm like, Oh boy, hang on boys. Hang on. I mean, we've seen where that lead all of a sudden becomes five, four for the opponent, but they hung on. Uh, it doesn't help that Spezza takes a high stick uh, to Couture. And then of course I, I guys, Couture's been hitting enough in the face. Let's not try to... <laughs> I just, just wear to, a cage at do, this point. Seriously. Let's not try to ha- recreate the Pavelski tip off the mouth. Let's not do that. We saw that in the last power play. We're like, oh my gosh, no. Uh, but the Sharks hold on. Couture would actually get the empty netter there. So a 5-3 final. Uh, Patrick mm-hmm. Mamani saying, the fact that we're coming out of this road game uh, with six out of possible 10 points minimum is incredible. Yeah, it's a big game, you know, and it, like even if even if it went the other way, like I don't think I would come out of this game mad, you know, depending on obviously how it went, but like I was thinking of this going into the going into the third, you know, in the second intermission, and I was like, okay, you know, if things fall off the rails here, like I'm not really going to be that mad because the way that they played, you know, again, right. it's early in the season, right? So it's not like we're in the middle of February and this is a back to back where I think, but like with the pressure that Toronto had put on at some points and, and the way that they had especially hemmed in those bottom two lines, like, you know, there, there was a couple of goals tonight where like, what do you, what more do you want Hill to do? Right. Right. Like there was nothing more Hill was going to do in those situations. And you you could see, you know, okay, maybe they, they come out and, you know, the, the second half of the back-to-back, the lungs are burning a lot more in the third period. Um, now, grant the third period was nothing like that. The Sharks, I thought, played a hell of a third period. You know, every they got better as the game went on, and, and that's that's the truth. You know, they weren't very good in the first. They were better in the second. I thought after the second, I'm like, well, that's as good a road period as you're going to get out right. of this team. And, and nope, they came out in the third, and they had, again, as good as a road period as – you would expect out of the team, right? I mean, you you start off slow, like you yeah. said. You start off slow. You expect them to be that slow, if not just dog tired after going back to back and flying in late. I mean, my goodness. I mean, it's it's uh, you know, again, like we said, the excuses were right there, but mm-hmm. they played hard. They played well. Uh, and, and I mean, we talk about now five for 14 on the power play, but their PK is perfect. I mean, that's yeah. not getting the story either. I mean, their PK is perfect. I mean, big ups to Cogliano, Benino, among other guys there, because this is becoming a total team effort. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's it. Like, even, like I said, even if like, you know, if the third period went down and, you know, the, the legs, you know, they just couldn't keep up anymore and, and Toronto got the better of them. Like it's hard. It would be hard to come on here and be super mad about, about the effort they put in tonight. So I thought they, they put in solid work and it's, it's, there's, I mean, it's obviously winning's always better. And if, you know, I would <laughs> sure. prefer if the Sharks won 82 <laughs> games, you know, and then won 16 more, like that would be Absolutely. ideal. Absolutely. But it's not going to happen. Right. Um, no. We wish, I mean, come on. We now. wish, but, but, but realistically, like there's going to be down, but if the Sharks play like this, it's hard. Like, this is a complete 180. And again, it's only four games, so let's not get too crazy here. But so far, it's been a complete 180 from the team we watched last year. Yeah. I mean, comp- comp- compete, give a damn. Um, you know, the the sports psychology of it as well. I mean, you can just get down right off the get-go. I mean, how yeah. many times have we seen, especially against Vegas, the first five minutes or the last five minutes, they get a goal and and it just doesn't work out, you know. Yeah, and it just falls apart, you know. So, uh, Sharks win five to three over the Leafs. Uh, I be- I want to say I we uh, we have the replay on on uh, NBC at like around seven. So you might be able to catch it if you want it. Of course, the Barracuda are just now getting underway against the Colorado Eagles. Uh, so on the lookout for that. Uh, actually, I'm seeing nine o'clock is what I'm seeing on there. So nine o'clock tonight for that. So, uh, but uh, Dolan playing three times in four nights for the first time in the league. I felt okay in the first, but I felt great in the second and third. I was really happy about that. They must have had Red Bull, Ian. <laughs> okay. I mean, look at it's it's a different like the NHL is a different animal, right? Like when you you know like it, like we play junior, like you might you'll play you know a couple games in a weekend or maybe even three games in a weekend, but then you're off the rest of the week, right? Right. College hockey similar, like you're not playing every night, but like the NHL, yeah, the NHL is a completely different beast when it comes to schedule, and it, that's why a lot of guys like. You know, and I think this is something with the Sharks having so many young guys in the lineup. The one thing that they're going to have to worry about is that middle of the season rookie wall. Yeah, because the schedule is hard it, it, it is hard to uh, make that transition to playing the, you know, the, the 82 games in a compressed NHL schedule, especially this year is going to be more compressed because of the Olympic break. So right. uh, it'll be interesting to see how, you know, how all these guys hold up uh, as the season progresses, because. Uh, a lot of them aren't going to be used to playing this. This the number of games they're going to be expected to play uh, in the NHL. Yeah. Matt M in the chat. I sincerely love Carlson's interview last game against Ottawa. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> if you haven't looked it up, you got to check that out. Uh, and you guys have mentioned the wolf pack mentality. Carl seems like he's taking on the alpha work with the inspiration from the kids. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look at leaders got a lead, right? Yeah. And I think that last season. There was a lot of problems and, and losing sucks. Like let's not make any winnings fun and losing sucks. I still want to see what happens when this team gets punched in the mouth and their nose gets a little bloody. And I want to see what happens then. Right. Because so far everything's been good. Yeah. They, you know, the, they, they got behind in, in the opening game, but so far, you know, things have kind of gone their way. I'm kind of looking to see how this team responds when their nose gets a little bloody. Yeah, and when, and and they lose a game here or there, right? And I want to see what happens then. I, I like how they defended each other, especially uh, after uh, the play against the Winnipeg that made it like I think four two, and then hurdles getting the crowd sure. going. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, you let's see what they have for adversity. You know, let's let's not have the, uh, I guess, the sixty two win Tampa Bay Lightning, of course. Uh, no yeah right like i mean that's there's gonna be adversity i'm just i that's what i want to see like there there's there's gonna be obviously look at there's gonna be tests all season right uh you know it's a long season there's gonna be there's gonna be tests along the way so far everything that they've they've been tested has gone their way and they've passed with flying colors yeah but i like i said i want to see what happens when when 
things go south a little bit because they will eventually. Yeah. I mean, it happens to every team. Oh yeah, I mean, no, no team is perfect. Uh, Kevin Lacey saying, "Isn't it amazing that the defense is suddenly better now that the forwards can hold on the puck for longer than five seconds?" You ain't wrong. No, or I like a lot, of, and and you know, I've said that a bunch too. Like you know, the 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 forward group not executing definitely hurt like some of the defensemen like obviously you know eric carlson's done really well but it's nice when your forwards finish absolutely it, it and helps. there were times last year where the forwards weren't finishing and i think that made eric carlson's numbers worse than they should have been it made brent burns's numbers worse than they should have been and, and so far again so far this year everything's gone everything's going the shark's way and i hope that continues yeah. and i want it to continue Definitely. Uh, an update uh, from uh, where? Where do the Eagles play? I know it's in Colorado, but where in Colorado is it? I don't think it's Colorado Springs. Or anyway, uh, the Eagles are up one nothing. Alex Bocage, uh, six eighteen into the game, uh, gets uh, the Eagles on board. So get you caught up on that. Uh, it is the only other time that they swept uh, uh, the Canada teams in the road trip. Uh, According to Uncle Darren Stevens, December 13th and 16th, 2016, when they took out Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal uh, at the at the same time. So, good to see that. Uh, but, yeah, 5-3 the final there. Uh, the next one, I mean, they, hen- they uh, head down to uh, Boston. And, and, Kevin, thank you. Loveland, Colorado. I, I, I kept thinking somewhere else for some reason. So, thank you, bud. Thank you for having my back. Uh-huh. But uh yeah, they head to Boston uh for early uh for an early game <laughs> Sunday morning 9:30 out here or well 9:30 for pregame 10 a.m. is the game time 1 p.m. on the East Coast. I mean, you talk about a team that can bloody them up and, you know, give them some adversity. Yeah, it's again, you know, there, there there's a bunch of tests. Like this game was definitely a test, and they passed. And they're going to be in tough against Boston. I think Boston's, you know, Boston's a good team. Maybe they're not the team that they were last year, but I still think they're a good team, and I still think that they're a, a team that can, especially, you know, spend like again those bottom two lines. That's what's going to really interest me is how they uh, perform as things go on. Because again, Toronto kind of had their way with the bottom six today. Right. Um, and I wonder if it's going to be more of the same against uh, the Bruins because uh, as good as the top two lines were, you can't have, you know, the the bottom six needs to be able to play. Um, and I hope that they get, you know, again, the best thing for these kids is to just get out there and play and, you know, they'll figure it out as they go. And so far it's been fine. But um, I think that'd be my only concern is the way that Toronto kind of manhandled our, our bottom six tonight. I think that uh, Boston could very easily do the same. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I kind of want to talk about the prospects really quick, especially mm-hmm. uh, the night that uh, Daniel Gushin had for uh, the uh, Niagara Ice Dogs. Yeah. Wow, a 5.9, including a hat trick. Uh, give us some more info on him. I know he was with uh, Muskegon last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, he's been unreal, I think. I, I, I last night he had a bunch of points. I think tonight is I last I saw he's had, you know, a couple of goals tonight. Hat trick last night. Um, just unreal, uh, unreal offensive skill on this kid. And I am looking forward to I'm I'm looking forward to not looking forward to at the same time when uh, Niagara finally makes their way up here. Because I'm definitely going to go to that game. Um, <laughs> and I'm sure I'll be happy and angry all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cause I mean, this just unreal, uh, the amount of, uh, offense this kid's putting up. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's crazy good to see, you know, like Weisblatt, you saw, I think Co had a night, you know, I mm-hmm. haven't even looked to see what, um, Borderlow did tonight. I know he was playing for uh, the university yeah. of Michigan. Um, but it's nice. Christian that- Robbins has had, uh, yep. Hell of, hell of a run too like a lot of the guys are getting off to a good start uh even even ben Gaudreau, like uh, his numbers aren't like super impressive 
but he's facing like the Sarnia Sting are such a bad team, and he's facing just a bajillion shots a night. Like I think one night he faced almost fifty shots, oh, and I think they lost in they ended up losing in overtime. But like without him, I think they're getting blown out of the barn. And that that I I to me, uh, especially in the OHL, which is mm-hmm. more so that the one that's more got the feel for the NHL if I'm not mistaken I don't know I think I think that if you like for quality of hockey I think that the Western Hockey League's probably got the best quality of hockey as far as just like intensity and as far as defensiveness the OHL somewhere in the middle and then there's the Q where defense is absolutely optional <laughs> I, I've, I've heard about that about the Q for sure <laughs> Uh, rare, rare sighting where Kevin says the good pronunciation puck guy. That's very rare. So thank you, Kevin, on that one. Um, yeah, I, I think that's going to pretty much do it for us. Uh, you know, the Kings and Stars mm-hmm. are tied up at one and one, uh, Bruins and Bruins hand the Sabres their first loss of the season four one in the final there. So, uh, that's the Sharks next opponent, <laughs> Should be an interesting one. Can they take down two undefeated teams? You know, so. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be on the lookout for that. So uh, any more comments on here? I think one thing I remember, uh, Chester Chivo, the Sharks are 4-0 and us fans don't know how to act. Is this a trick? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, look at like after last season, I think just soak soak this all up soak this all up as long as it lasts right because you don't know what tomorrow brings yeah, exactly so i would i would just for me i would soak up as much of this as humanly possible um and yeah i just enjoy it man because again <laughs> after the last couple of seasons i don't know what tomorrow brings. Yeah, yes. i hope tomorrow brings more games like this but yeah if they don't uh, that's it yep absolutely now we do have one more thing. Uh, of course, mm. as you all know, um, Leafs Twitter is basically, or Leafs YouTube is basically Steve Dangle. Uh, he also works at Sportsnet. Uh, the girlfriend got me a little thing, but I had to clip this because um, he just because he he didn't know what what the our podcast was like, and uh, mm. he he laid this on us. Teal Town after dark. That sounds like hockey, but in underwear. Uh (laughs) Yes. So, Ian, are you are you doing are you doing this podcast in uh, in underwear? Let's be honest. Well, you cannot see me from the waist down, so I'll leave (laughs) it to your imagination. (laughs) Oh, fun! Good stuff. Good stuff. I know there was a lot of. I know Matt M is saying we got praise from Freege and Merrick. Uh, I know. Uh, Ray and Gord were mentioning that they, it was a TSN broadcast tonight, you know. It, but like Rocket said, small sample size for sure. It always, I mean, for sure, it's four games. Like, I, I, I think you should enjoy. Like right. when the Sharks do good, it's good. Enjoy it. I just, but like, I'm not gonna come on here and be like, so you know, in April when we're playing in the Stanley Cup final, like I'm not gonna do yeah. that. No. Uh, and, and to kind of paraphrase your 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 favorite comment. You're good, and they should feel good. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Well, yes, yes. They're good. We're when when the sharks do good, you should feel good. Like again, I like. I'm not saying you know. Like I, I don't. I would never come on here and tell you like, well, this isn't gonna last. Whatever. But <laughs> like, you know, like again, I I think Chris said something in the chat. You know, like, you know, we they got to the point where the we kind of took the playoffs for granted. Yeah. Uh, like it was just it was a foregone conclusion. Yeah, the Sharks are going to be in the playoffs or whatever. You know, like this year, they they could be, but I certainly you know that's not a claim I want to make right this second. You know, oh, yeah, four games in, the Sharks are definitely in the playoffs. I mean, they could be in the Pacific if they keep this up. Then they're definitely going to be in the conversation. I mean, you have two teams. You have the Golden Knights and you have Edmonton Oilers, and then there's Jump Ball. There's no reason if the Sharks keep up this up that they can't be one of those teams. But long way to go to get there absolutely i mean just because it's first place now doesn't necessarily you know mean that everything's gonna be all right uh so 
Uh, so with that, we shall get out of here. Uh, apparently, Bordelow is a minus one as uh, Western that's Michigan great. is up 5-2 on Michigan. So that's an interesting one, interesting development there. So in case you missed anything or you want to watch this again, check us out on tealtownusa.com or your favorite podcatcher, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, TuneIn, iHeartRadio. We're always available at tealtownusa.com. And for those who want to rewatch the game, I think it's on at 9 o'clock, you can just rewatch this again, you know? Because after sure, you should watch the game and then rewatch. The absolutely, show. you know why? Because why not? I mean, absolutely. Why not? Okay, okay, Dingle, calm down. All right, so we'll be back with you. I believe it. it uh, Landy's going to take the run on the early, uh, the early game uh, on here. So if you haven't hit it already, please hit that subscribe button down below. Check us out at tealtownusa.com. Of course, follow us on the social media. Uh, accounts everywhere We're, I'm, I'm trying to convince uh to do the tiktok account we'll see we shall see on that one uh, i hope you have your dancing shoes ready ian um jeez so final thoughts and where the people can find you good sir final thoughts uh when the sharks do good it's good uh it's amazing what uh league average goaltending can get you um and it's actually been above average so far so um that and uh you can find me at ian blogs hockey on the twitter machine come talk to me on twitter i love talking to everyone so um or tell me how terrible my takes are i also will listen to that too um but uh definitely yeah uh, definitely come hit me up on the twitter machine um because that's pretty much the only place i am um but other than that man like i said soak it up soak it up absolutely I'm at Puckguy14 on the Twitter and the Instagram. Again, we'll be back with you following Sharks and Bruins. That's a 10 a.m. start on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Um, yes, just in case you have the NFL Red Zone Octobox, you're just going to have to have one more box to watch your Sharks hockey uh, before the Niners play on Sunday night. So thankfully, they're not going up against the Niners. Uh, so thankful for that. But thankful for all of you for watching. I, I know we hit 99 live viewers at one time so we truly appreciate each and every one of you yeah we will see you sunday afternoon shark following sharks and bruins and until then first off sharks and bruins then after dark following a game pucknologist sunday night they'll recap everything that's gone on so far aj and jerk uh and then we'll be going on from there and then of course uh right now we'll jump over to the discord uh we'll we'll, we'll watch oilers and golden knights together Hey, because it's only six thirty-seven over here, so uh, get your get your dinner going, Ian. If you need to uh, make a quick run to uh, Timmy's to get some more donut holes, I mean, come on, why not? So, until then, keep it real, keep it teal, keep it real teal. Have a great night, everyone. We will see you Sunday afternoon and Sunday night for Pucknologists. Good night, everyone. Good night.